Hello, it's Mazzy. Whack-a-mole number 116. It's been a little while since I've uh, performed the five finger uh, random pull from my collection, not five, just double-handed, one-handed, single-handed. Uh, I wanna thank everyone. I just, uh, this past week, and crossed over 18,000 subscribers and I am gobsmacked and I want to thank you and I don't usually come out asking for subscriptions and subscribers, uh, occasionally I do, but um, and I don't tell people to press that little bell button, uh, don't bother with that, it just wakes me up at 3 in the morning, uh, and you too probably, so uh, I do appreciate that and it looks like only half the people that watch my videos actually subscribe, so if you are so inclined, I'd love you to subscribe, it would help uh, getting uh, these videos out to more people. Uh, I did lose about five <laughs> since five or six uh, people since my top 10 uh, wankers in music video, which it which perplexes me a little bit because I think people miss the humor, even what, what with the smirk on my face and, uh, you know, come on, have a little fun. Let's enjoy a little bit. But anyway, Fair enough, but more people apparently uh, jumped on board because of that. And uh, the other content, uh, we, I, I really enjoy the serious uh, sharing. The uh, recent David Ellis and I did a video on album cover art artist. I love that. We had a great hour and a, more than an hour and a half discussion. So I know it's a longer video, but if you have the patience, uh, watch it. But again, thank you for 18,000 subscribers, and I, I am very touched. If you want to uh, follow me on Instagram, it's Mazzy's Music. Mazzy's Music, M-A-Z-Z, apostrophe S. Mazzy's Music on Instagram. Just follow. Have some fun. Share your Instagram. I'll, I'll follow you, too, if you uh, share music. And I said, that's a great way to find about new releases and new drops and and uh, use record stores in your area that uh, come across uh, new uh, collections and things. So I always advise people to do that. Even if you're an old, I don't do social media guy, um, you know, it's a good way to see what's happening in the world. Okay. So if you are new to uh, my channel, because there's been a lot of new subscribers over the last month, literally this year, this first month of 2022, Whack-A-Mole is when I randomly pull five things from my collection. And it's kind of fun and I showcase them. I talk about maybe when I got the record, who's on it, what the music's about. It's kind of a way for me to exercise. And actually, after I do these videos, I actually, I can say actually uh, more times in one sentence, I usually and frequently actually uh, play those records. So whatever I pull now, they're going to be on my turntable when I go upstairs and play the music. So whack-a-mole number, whatever I said it was. So here we go. And you never look at the shelf. One, two, three, four, and five. Hmm. Okay. PJ Harvey, um, Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea, Island Records. This is my second favorite uh, PJ Harvey album. I just got uh, England Shakes, just came out with the demo versions. I love this whole series uh, over the last, what, two years now. They've been uh, reissuing on vinyl all her albums. And each time, and I, don't, I haven't been getting them all on vinyl, but each time this kind of English... Uh, post-punk, folky, dancey, indie artist. I mean, she's been around for quite some time, but does some really uh, uh, just direct music. Uh, one of my favorite women in music uh, today uh, for the last, what, 20 years now, 15 years maybe. And England Shakes uh, has come out as well as England Shakes demos just recently. I don't know what to say about this. Kamikaze is a cool song and Big Exit and the whores hustle and the hustlers whore. So, um, I mean, such an urban, wonderful cover, but I don't know what else to say about this. What year did this come out? 2000. So again, yeah, 22 years ago. 22 years ago, PJ Harvey. 
The slide area, a promo I got of Ry Cooter's uh, Warner Brothers album, The Slide Area. Um, this is, is this is an interesting album. I didn't love this album when it came out. It was kind of a funky record. It opens up with the song uh, UFOs Land in the Ghetto. With um, It's got Bobby King and, and uh, Willie Green and John Hyde and Herman Johnson on vocals. And this is that period where Ry Cooter was playing with, uh, you know, just after this with Little Village with Nick Lowe, Jim Keltner, John Hyatt, and of course that great John Hyatt album. Um, what's it called? Black and White Cover. You're, someone's yelling it out right now. Uh, but, oh, God, beautiful record. His John Hyatt's best record. But they did a lot of collaborations around this period on helping up on each other's album. And uh, Slide Area is a cool record. What else is on here? Uh, Mama Don't Treat Your Daughter Mean. So he's got a really funky soul thing. They do a cover of Blue Suede Shoes, not my favorite. It's kind of swampy. But um, uh, this is a cool record. Ken, this is from 1982. So, God, 40 years. 40 friggin' years. I can't believe I, uh, I got this record 40 years ago. Now, it's ironic uh, that... Unfortunately, uh, Dennis Wil Wilson, uh, one of the Beach Boys, the surfer, the one that actually surfed, uh, died in a boating accident, drowned. Um, Pacific Ocean Blue has become a cult favorite. I remember getting this when it came out. This is 1977, and this is a, a pr my, another promo copy. So we're going uh, two promo copies so far out of, the th out of the three records I've shown. This is a really good record, and this is over the years, developed cult status. I remember when it came out, you know, it, it people liked it, but they didn't love it. It didn't seem to fit anywhere in 1977. Remember, that's what rumors came out that year, and there's more of a commercial access thing, and this isn't really that. There's no, uh, speci there's no like, hit potential on here, but it's become a really interesting record, and it, I think it's grown in stature, and I think it's it's aged well like a fine wine. So, uh, Dennis Wilson, I, I would argue uh, it might be one of the best um, solo albums by any of the Beach Boys, aside from Brian. Um, Brian did some great albums, you know, solo albums after he kind of got mended and, and out of that dependency on, on drugs and out from the, um, the clutches of that... Uh, the guy that was keeping him down, drugged, drugged in bed uh, all those years. But anyway, uh, Dennis Wilson on Columbia Records. Or is it on um, Caribou Records? Is it part of Columbia, distributed by Columbia? Number four. Hey, another promo copy. Uh, my promo copy, and this is this the second or third Tubes album on a &M. I love their first album produced by Al Cooper. Fantastic album. I featured that in an al uh, in a video that you can find here on Art Rock. And I love that first Tubes album. Um, this is a good record, but it again, I don't think they ever equal that. Of course, after uh, several albums on AM that they never really got beyond a sort of a cult status, they did go to Capitol Records where they had the hit that was all over MTV. Forgot it was more of a pop hit, and it didn't really grab me as much as these records. Um, oh, the one, the second album I think is the one I really like with uh, Young and Rich. That's what I'm thinking of. This must be their third album, then. and it's got uh, Kathy's Clone, This Town, Pounds of Flesh, um, and Mingo Lewis uh, plays on this. Interesting. Forgot about that. Great cover though, the Tubes. Originally from the Southwest, they were called the Beans, came to San Francisco, did some, you know, Feeway Bill, uh, Vince Welnick, uh, who would later join the last incarnation of the Grateful Dead on the keyboards, and then Jerry Garcia died, and then uh, unfortunately he committed suicide. You got Prairie Prince, fantastic, bombastic, really great, great drummer. You got um, uh, Roger Steen, Young guitarist, you got um, uh, Fee Waybill. That must be Mingo Lewis, yeah. Um, you got Vince Wilnick, is that right, on bass? And um, the other guitar player. God, I'm just, come on, you gotta, I gotta. Oh, Michael Cotton on keyboards. I'm on 
Michael Cotton on uh, synthesizers and um, Bill Spooner. I'm sorry, Bill Spooner. I can't, how can you ever get Bill Spooner? Uh, he taught uh, guitar at Blue Bear uh, Music S School in San Francisco, Fort Mason for a number of years too. I used to see him when I used to bring my son there to take some uh, Suzuki guitar lessons, but uh, great cover. I know that... Um, Prairie Prince and um, Michael Cotton were sort of the artists, and they've been working on a documentary for years about the tubes. I don't know if it's ever seen the light of day. I'd love to see it, because I think I saw them a bunch of times. Great art rock uh, theatrical presentation, and, and fantastic. And look at the graphics there, so wonderful. And lastly, number five in this whack-a-mole in 2022, Julie London, the great Julie London. What? Ingenue, what a s beautiful woman, gorgeous voice, loungy, late night, early morning, uh, sultry music. I left my heart in San Francisco. Oh, Julie, Julie. Maybe she's singing that to me. The End of the World. Is that the song? Um, who did the original? I forgot the original, but I remember the Herman's Hermits had that. Don't they know it's the end of the world? When you don't love me anymore. Anyway, Julie London on Liberty Records. Wonderful. You need to have uh, Latin and Satin. That's one of the uh, Julie London records that I think everyone should own. So that's a whack-a-mole. That's all there is to it. Nothing else. Some are more exciting than others. But um, again, thank you for everything. Thanks for, for subscribing. Click subscribe and uh, comments. And we'll see you next time. There's more, a lot more content. A lot more creative showcases of this collection and collaborations with others. Mazzy loves you.